Hi everybody, my name is Grizzled Guernsey Gamer, or Triple G for short, and today we're going to be talking about the Earforce X07 headset for the Xbox One. I'm going to be going through things like the pros and cons, specifications, price, and anything that's a bit difficult to learn just from opening the box and putting it in. The uh, specifications for this new headset are quite similar to some of the older headsets that came out on the 360. This is the first one that's going to be on next gen with the Xbox One and I believe there's also one for the PlayStation 4. Um, it's pretty similar, there's 50mm drivers, There's um, I think this one has 7.1 surround sound rather than 5.1 from the 360. There's also things like uh, it's wireless but not in the conventional sense so if you have ever used things like the X12s which I use on my 360 there's less tangling all the cables between your desk and all your other parts for your consoles and tables and such. Uh, there's also um, a few other tweaks like the way that the uh, the volume dials work now. Um, on the X12 there used to be a bass slider and there also used to be a game chat and a party chat slider. Uh, the new one changes that a little bit and it's used with this new adapter. Uh, there's a few different things to this adapter. Uh, basically just goes in the bottom of your controller. You've got your mute button on the top, right in the middle, which uh, the other one I had had a, a kind of slider that had that, there was a cable and there'd be a bit of a slider and it was usually quite finicky to get to while playing games. But now that it's at the bottom of your controller it's really easy to get to. You've got the uh, master plus and minus volumes on the right and there's also the game chat and the party chat on the left which I'll go into a little bit later on how it actually all works because it is a completely different setup. And the next bit I want to talk to you about is the new microphone. Um, it looks a bit sleeker than the old one. It's got this kind of um, special construction with uh, the actual cord where it's quite malleable so it doesn't break, it doesn't get tangled, very sturdy and as far as microphones go it's always good to have a kind of air pop shield or this kind of material so that when you're speaking through party chat you've got a nice clear voice. Um, it's especially good when it's connected to the headset because it doesn't get in the way, it's not in your peripheral vision or anything and you can change it to whatever position you prefer. And the other main bit that everyone's looking forward to is the headset itself. Um, it's got a lot of features, especially compared to the previous models I've used and that I've seen on the market. It's got a um, good swivel on the actual uh, head pieces, so if you're playing a game, you can just kind of rest it there. If you're not, what if you're say talking to someone and you don't have the time to be listening to the game, you can do that. So it's got good maneuverability. It's quite good at focusing on your head. It does. It's not too um, too lax. It's not too tight. It's got a good forceful, but not pressurized feel to it. The padding on the top is really good. There's also a different stitching. It might sound really minor but the stitching is different so it's a bit harder to break and if there is a tear it doesn't unravel too bad. Uh, the clever bits I find are with some of the ways that you construct it. So when you plug in the microphone there's a little dot on both the headset and the microphone so you go oh, align the dots, pop it in, done, no problem. The cable itself has its own connection and there's actually a big line across it so when you're connecting it again you just go oh where's the lines done then you get the adapter pop that in the bottom simple as no because the uh, the X12 actually had a thing where you had to put two cables in the back you had to either use a HDMI adapter or you had to use the AV cables and stuff all sorts it got quite complicated with this you just put it in the bottom of the controller and you're good to go and then there is actually the um, point where you have to get an update for the controller, but when you open the box, the first thing you do see is a note saying, update your controller before you actually try this, otherwise it won't work. One thing I do want to tell you about is uh, the wireless mode. Um, 
On the advertising, it's called a wireless controller, but you can see this big cable. It's wireless in the sense that you can plug it into your controller and move around with it, like uh, in my flat where I live. To test out the range, I actually went from one side to the other and it didn't lose connection. So that's really cool in the fact that you can still be playing and move around without having too much trouble and you can still hear without it cutting off. Uh, the immersion for games is really good because the new 7.1 when I was playing games like Titanfall, I could hear all the people around me with bullets flying, Titans crunching on like branches and uh, the terrain and people like running about and people sneaking up behind me. So it's really good for that. And especially um, if you play things like shooters, this is something that gives you a massive advantage because you can hear the enemies around you. One thing I will say though is there are a few problems with this headset that I've found playing. Um, one of the main things is battery life. Um, even when your controller isn't fully out of battery, there have been bits where, for example, I was playing Titanfall and it just conks out and you try to reconnect it, it doesn't work. It, the light will be on, but it won't be responsive, so you have to take out the batteries or battery pack, plug them back in and stuff. And typically this happened when I was fighting two, two guys and it was really worse timing. Um, it also eats a lot of battery power because you've got this massive headset attached to it. If you don't have a plug and charge kit or a play and charge kit, you're going to be at a disadvantage because you will be going through batteries every day. So you kind of need to have the play and charge kit just so you're not spending a lot of money on power. That said, uh, you can still keep the play and charge kit plugged in, which would probably pro uh, solve both of those problems. Um, it's not like with the X12s again, where um, when you plugged in a play and charge kit and had the headset, there'd be a massive buzzing noise. And if you were in a party or whatever, all people would hear this massive white noise. But that's one of the problems. Uh, the other problem I've had with it sometimes is um, with the sound quality, there'll be little kind of blips. So you'll be playing a game and all you'll hear are these little kind of when you're playing. And I think this is something again to do with the connection between the Xbox controller and the Xbox, but that's just another thing that's to look out for. The other problems I have found with this um, headset, there's been another two. One of the main ones I've had is it's kind of creaky. So when you'll be playing a game and say, I don't know, you'll, uh, you'll open your jaw, the earpiece, because of the way it's, again, because it's quite focused and it's quite grippy, you'll hear creaking noises. So if you talk to someone or if you're just kind of yawning, you'll hear this big creaking of all the uh, all the mechanisms and stuff in the ear, which might be more of just from wireless headset to another, but if, it, if it's across the board, then that's a bit of a pain because it is right around your ear and it isolates noise around you, so it's really noticeable. The other thing is, um, Manipulating the sound is a lot trickier than the other headsets. It took me a, about a day or two to figure out how it worked, but um, this one has a weird way of doing it. So you have your overall volume here, and that goes up, that goes down. But the way I can kind of describe these two is it's almost like weighing scales. They go up to about 12, so when you have 12 of game, it's just game and you can't hear the party. But every time you press down, you basically tip the scales until they're either even or exactly the opposite. So when you're actually trying to figure out how that works, it's basically adding and subtracting game and chat volume. So if I had maximum game chat on, every time I press the little person symbol, it takes one block of volume off the game chat and adds it to the party. And then I found it's good to kind of get a good mix between the two and then you can start playing with the overall volume but it did take me a while to figure out how it actually worked. When you actually hit the ceiling, as it were, for um, the chat volumes as well, you will hear an audible kind of beep to let you know that's the maximum volume. So that's quite neat, but it does take a bit of time to get used to. There are two types for this headset. There's the um, one I'm showing you today, which is the Air Force X07 and the X Force now, the only major difference, without getting too technical, is that the 7 has better audio drivers, so you'll get a better and more clear sound, but you also get another cable so you can connect it to things like mobile devices, iPods and tablets. So even if you're on the move, you can be playing some of your casual games with this headset and get the best possible sound. This one will set you back $129.99 UK price. The four will put you back 99.99. 99 
So in summary, you may be wondering, should I need this if I want to be playing games on Xbox One? You don't technically need it. This is more of an alternative if you don't have a very high-tech sound system, because that will get you a better experience overall. But if you're in, say, noisy apartments or houses, or you need something that doesn't make a lot of noise, but has really good quality and is confined just to your ears, this is the stuff you need. If you're also into things like shoot-em-ups, this kind of gear is exactly what you need to up your game because you'll be able to hear much more clarity in the game and you'll be able to hear when people are trying to sneak up behind you or distant calls for where you're supposed to be going where the fight is thickest. And with games like FIF, which are more single player, it really adds to the immersion of the game because the quality is so different from just listening to it from a tele speaker or listening from a surround sound. But if you don't have that, this is the way to go. I give it grisly approval. <laughs>